Hey people, today we're talking about mastering. So I'm gonna show you a super simple mastering chain using free and stock plugins in Ableton Live to get your songs ready for release on all of the major streaming platforms. Links to all of the free plugins I'll be using will be down in the description below and on that note, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing I do when I'm starting a new master is make sure I only have one audio track and nothing else to distract me. And I make sure that my BPM is set to whatever my song's BPM is. So when I drag this in, everything lines up and I'm not gonna have any weird warping issues. So always just come down here and make sure that warp is not enabled. Otherwise you're gonna get some weird artifacts. And what we're gonna do here is start with a clean master chain. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab the things that I know I'm pretty much going to need. So let's go ahead and grab an EQ8. And full disclosure, I do normally use Pro-Q3 by FabFilter for this kind of stuff. It usually comes out sounding a little bit better and it's a lot easier and more functional to use than Ableton's, but we're gonna do this with uh, stock plugins for today and free plugins. So let's go ahead and set that and I'm just gonna set a low cut at about 25 to start. So before we go any further into actually mastering the song, I wanna give you a few pro tips on what mastering actually can and cannot do for your song. So mastering is really only that final little push to get your song sounding polished, loud, and ready for release. Its main job is to kind of shape the song as a whole and to make the whole piece sound cohesive. So in that vein, mastering cannot make a bad mix sound good. So if you have issues with a kick that's too loud or a bass that's sounding too muddy, mastering it is really only going to magnify those issues. If you have problems like this, you should be fixing them in the mixing stage and fixing it at the track level. So making sure that you're clipping your kick, clipping your bass, making sure everything is leveled appropriately before you try and master it. There are what I like to call band-aid fixes like slapping a multi-band compressor or maybe third-party plugins that can raise or lower the volume of certain frequency areas in your mix, but these are really like putting a band-aid on something that should be, you know, going to the hospital. This is fine. So now that we know all this, let's go ahead and start building that master chain. And then let's go ahead and grab a glue compressor. And then this one is not a stock Ableton plugin, but it's a free clipper as the name free clip suggests. So I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to download this. And then I want to grab a utility and a limiter. And the last thing that I want to grab is also a free plug-in called this Yulian loudness meter. Really, really helpful in determining um, peak volume, your LUFS, which is your kind of perceived and overall loudness. So it really helps you get your tracks kind of up to the standard of other tracks. So if you use reference tracks, kind of listening to them and A being. So I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these except for the Yulian loudness meter, control G and put them into a rack. So I already have my track set up here and I picked the loudest portion. And this is actually a track that I made in one of my previous videos. It's the uh, Chill Lo-Fi House from scratch. And if you wanna see how I made this song, I have the video of the entire process and I'll go ahead and link that above. So before I start, I'm just going to check and see where it's measuring on the LUFS before I do anything else here. So about negative 18, which is a good place to start for a mix. And if we go ahead and look at this on the master meter here, you can see that it's hovering somewhere around about negative six-ish, maybe a little above, but that's okay. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start with that low cut. Um, I'm not gonna do anything else with the EQ until I actually push this because I wanna see what it sounds like before I make any cuts or boosts and just see kind of where I feel it needs some help, if it needs any help. So let's go ahead and set this glue compressor. So usually I like to have a slower attack, so I'm gonna set this up to three. The release I'm gonna take down a little bit. So I'm gonna turn the soft clip function on, and I'm just gonna take this down a little bit. So there's just a little bit of compression. Maybe somewhere around there. And then turn this makeup gain up. And I'm turning this up more than just compensating for the compression. So I'm pushing it into that soft clip just a little bit. So that's sounding okay. I'm gonna come over here to the clipper. I'm gonna change it from hard to this cubic mode, which I think sounds pretty good. 
So I'm going to start cranking this gain a little bit and just see kind of when the mix starts to distort and fall apart. And then we'll back it off from there. Honestly, I could have cranked it to like six or seven before we're getting distortion, especially down in that lower end. But I feel like three and a half to four dB is probably going to be okay for this and be loud enough. So let's go ahead and check out our loudness meter and see where we're at now. So we started at negative 18. And with these changes now we're at, we're all the way at like negative nine and a half now. Um, normally I aim for about negative 12 to negative 11 with my more chill, like lo-fi type stuff. If you're doing like, you know, more tech house, dance house, stuff like that, I would say maybe closer to like negative nine or negative eight luffs is probably more in the range of what would be competitive. But honestly, like I said, as long as you have a clean mix and basically making sure that your low end, your kick, your bass, all of that low stuff is kind of clipped at the track level before you come to your master, it's super easy to push it into a limiter and just get a clean, loud sounding master. So I'm honestly going to just back this off a little bit for now so it's not so loud. And what I want to do, I'm going to take this down a little bit. What I want to do is go through and just kind of sweep through some of this uh, EQ8 and see if there are some sections that maybe want to pull down or pull up and see if it makes the mix sound any better. If you want to solo any of the kind of bands that you're listening to here, just go ahead and hit those headphones there. And then you can drag this around and hear just that area. So I'm feeling about right here, we can cut a little bit because you can hear there's kind of a lot of that bass and kick resonance building up. And I feel like cutting this is going to just make it a little bit cleaner. I think maybe here too, just a little bit. And then maybe one more right about where this clap is hitting. And then I also do want to add just a little bit of a cut here on the higher end. So for this limiter, I'm going to change the look ahead to six milliseconds, just so it's giving it a little bit more time. Let's change the ceiling on this limiter to negative one, which is kind of the standard for like Spotify and a lot of other streaming platforms. And I'm also turning auto release off on the limiter and I'm just going to take it down just so it's a really quick release as well. So that's sounding pretty good. Um, I think one thing I might want to do, and this is a lot of the reason I use Pro-Q a lot of the time, is it's so easy to just add a dynamic EQ in a certain spot. And I feel like this one in particular here on the about 150 hertz range could use a little bit of dynamic EQ just because I don't want all of the bass taken out all of the time. I just kind of when the kick and the bass are hitting together, I wanted to duck that area just a little bit more so those resonances aren't building up. So what I'm gonna do is grab the envelope follower and drop that right behind the EQ8. And I'm going to hit the map button and I'm gonna map it to the gain on this number two band. So I'm gonna map it to there. And essentially what we can do is turn this into a dynamic EQ and kind of set the parameters for it. So you can see as soon as I did that, it went all the way to zero here because we have our minimum value here set at zero. So if we drag this back up, let's just play this and see what's happening. So it's boosting it up, which we don't want. So let's drag this 100 down. So maybe somewhere around there. And let's go ahead and turn this fall up because you can see it's really, really jittery because what an envelope follower is doing, it's kind of following all of the transients so basically the envelope of the sound and where we're putting on a master, it's kind of trying to follow the entire song, which can be a little chaotic. 
So what I'm going to do to smooth it out is to raise up the percentage of this fall value. And since our kick is pretty much the highest transients are the most powerful transient in our song, it's going to basically, every time the kick hits, it's going to trigger it. And then by smoothing out that fall, it's going to come down again. So check this out. So now we pretty much have that dynamic EQ hitting every time that kick hits. Okay, so right now this is hitting at about negative 10 and a half luffs, which I think is more than enough loud for this type of music, this kind of more chill lo-fi house vibe. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I wanna do before I say this is good is I like to use this utility and basically just gain stage this. So everything that I've done so far, I want to match the volume with the original mix and make sure that it sounds good because I liked the way the mix sounded. And as long as it sounds close to that, now that it's mastered and loud, I think it's good to go. So if I turn all of this off, so about negative eight. And if I turn it back on, so it's at negative one right there. Let's go ahead and do minus seven and a half about. So now that's about negative eight. So they're about the same now. So let's just kind of A-B it back and forth and see if it sounds about the same or better. Honestly, I think it sounds better. These cuts that I added here, I think are giving it a little more clarity and making the highs come in a little bit better and the lows actually sound a little bit cleaner as well. And once I'm happy with everything, which I think this one is sounding pretty good, I wanna go ahead and get rid of the utility out of my master track, just to make sure that the volume is back up to where it's supposed to be. And just kind of finishing touches here, I like to make sure I have a little fade at the very beginning of my track so I don't have any weird clicks or pops just in case. And the same with the end here. Go ahead and just find a good place here. And just make sure it has a nice fade out. And the last step after I've actually exported a master that I think sounds good coming from my headphones is I like to listen to it across different devices. So I'll play it in my car. I'll play it from my iPhone, from my ear pods, from different speakers that I have throughout the house and just make sure that it sounds good across all of them. And if it does, then it's probably safe to say that I'm good to release it. And that is pretty much how I master all my songs. I like to keep it really simple. And like I said, the real secret is having a good mix. And as long as you have a good mix, you can make it loud and it'll be super clean, super easy. And I hope that I made mastering a little less scary for some of you that maybe thought it was scary. And please do remember if you learned anything, if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next one.